What's going on there guys? This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is another editorial video, mainly because I didn't have enough time or the resources to create an actual review for you today, so you'll see one tomorrow, or if not tomorrow, most definitely Friday. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, Saturday. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to talk about Nintendo uh, in specific because I saw a very interesting article on technobuffalo.com that stated that the NGP NGP, not the NGP, the Nintendo 3DS, as well as the Nintendo Wii have sold less units in the past month than they've ever sold before. And the 3DS has sold, or they sold more units in the first week than they've sold since the first week. The 3DS has really been a pretty massive failure. And it's too bad because, you know, I think it was a good product idea. It just wasn't well executed. And uh, Nintendo's not considering um, a lot of the things I'm going to talk about in this upcoming video. So, Listen up, and if you disagree with me, let me know. If you think, Quinn, you're stupid, you're up in the night, uh, let me know. But I really do think that my opinions are pretty well accurate to what they need to adhere to. And uh, hire me. I'll tell you what you need to do right now. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Nintendo and its history in the gaming market. Nintendo has been hugely prolific and hugely successful, and they've always had a really, really good grasp on the gaming market. I mean, if we look in the past, it's not that they always had more powerful processors in their gaming systems. It's not because the... Um, you know, they were embraced more by the community, it's because they were cheap, one of the reasons. So they got a lot of market share. And because they had a lot of market share, they had better titles, more publishers came to their platform. I mean, just look at it in the past. With the Super Nintendo, uh, the uh, Sega Genesis didn't last a chance. The Sega Genesis was powerful in every single aspect, uh, more powerful in every single aspect, but Nintendo was to the market first, and they got all the publishers with their cheaper pricing. The same holds true with the Nintendo 64. The Nintendo 64's you know, technologies were pretty archaic. The Dreamcast had actual CDs. Nintendo 64 was still using cartridges with a weird looking freaking controller that was totally not ergonomic and was bizarre, but they were to the market first and they had the best pricing and therefore they got all the people in the market and they got all the publishers to ride on their platform. Nintendo's been really, really good at that in the past. Now, the GameCube is the one exception that was really pretty much a failure, and that's because they were a little bit late to the market. The PS2 had come out, and the PS2, as everyone knows, was the most dominant platform by far in the last generation of consoles. I mean, it's not even close. The original Xbox was good, it sold well, but <laughs> it got destroyed by the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2 is still selling quarter of a million units a year in 2011. It was discontinued like six years ago. So, you know, that wasn't even a contest. Let's take a look at the Wii and the Xbox 360 and the PS3. The Nintendo Wii was absolutely prolific in the market. I'm not trying to undermine its success because it's, it moved more consoles than anyone else. Nintendo moved 83 million consoles versus the 50 and the 53 million from Sony and Microsoft. So just so much more. And the margins on the Wii were actually quite a bit better than that of the PS3 and the Xbox 360. If you guys remember, uh, Sony was actually releasing their kind of looks and statistics and they were actually losing money every console they sold in the beginning of the PlayStation 3's lifespan. Um, and it took a while for components to get cheaper to start making money off consoles. But um, my, er, Nintendo came into the market a little bit late you know, along with the PS3, the Xbox 360 had already been in for about a full year. But the reason that we sold so well were, again, for two reasons. It was cheap. It was by far the cheapest platform on the market. Even the arcade version or whatever it was, the dinky little cheap toy box version, the watered down, you get the console and that's about it. That version of the Xbox 360 was still about 100 to 150 bucks more than the $249 Nintendo Wii. If you guys can remember, the Wii was so incredibly prolific, and the other reason was because of innovation. They moved away from this technology or this controller style technology that's been used in consoles since the beginning of time. They used their motion control, which was really cool in the beginning, but it ended up being more gimmicky than anything else. And I think that's the problem with the Nintendo 3DS. It's gimmicky. Sure, it's cool that there's 3D, it's cool that there's two cameras where you can point the camera at your arm and it puts little guys on there, but in I mean, let's be realistic here. That doesn't provide a whole lot of entertainment value. With the Wii, we still use it. We have ours downstairs. We'll probably turn it on once every three or four months, but it's always at a party. We're never playing the Wii. And in fact, even with our Kinect, even with our Kinect, we don't play the Kinect at our house by ourselves. We'll play Call of Duty or whatever. We play, we only turn on the Kinect and the Microsoft, or only we only turn on the Xbox when people are at our house. It's a party style kind of gaming, which is fun. And I think there is a market for that, but not so much of a market that it's going to take the market by storm. So I think that they need to kind of revamp their 
their thoughts in their head and get realistic again because even though this innovation is cool, it's not really realistic for the majority of gamers. So we've talked about the history of the uh, Nintendo Wii. Let's talk about last month, like I was talking about earlier. In April, last month, the Nintendo 3DS sold fewer consoles than the seven-year-old PSP. The PSP is seven years old. There's been hardly any changes to it since day one, and they sold more units in Japan than they did Nintendo 3DS, which is a brand new console. Same pricing as well. Absolutely insane. And again, this is because it's gimmicky. There's no real market for that 3D technology yet. And I don't think that there ever will be, even if it does develop and it doesn't cause extreme fatigue on your eyes. Um, I just don't think that that's really what the market's looking for. So what does Nintendo to do, need to do? I mean, is there any recourse? Yeah, there's recourse, they're fine. This is what they need to do. And let me talk about one more thing before we get into this. Another reason portable gaming has been really a struggle the last few years is with the introduction of smart smartphones, most specifically the iPhone and the iPod Touch. There's incredibly powerful processors inside the iPhone and the iPod Touch, and there's these amazing games that we're seeing. seeing. I mean, Infinity Blade or whatever that's called. It's one of the most impressive games I've ever seen on a small screen. It beats the PSP, it beats the 3DS. It is just an incredibly graphic intensive, beautiful, well-built game. And here's the cool thing. It's not even so much that the games are that great on the iPhone, it's that the games are cheap. They're getting this indie development community, which you don't have to spend $40 on a title. I don't have to drive to the store, spend 40 bucks to play a 3DS game that entertains me for two hours. I can buy a 99 cent game, it entertains me for two hours, and it, then I'm done with it. Two hours, 99 cents versus $40, you know? And so that's why I think this mobile market has really changed is because there are, there are big publishers. I mean, I'm not trying to undermine the fact that there's EA and Gameloft on the iPhone, but there's also little, tiny little guys. I mean, the Tiny Wings developer who's made hundreds of thousands of dollars off his game is only one dude. And he built the game in, what did he say, like two weeks or something like that? Wow. So as you can see, it's totally changed the market and developers are able to develop on these smaller platforms and no one develops for the 3DS or the PSP because that's not open to companies that have fewer than millions of dollars to start development and it's really unpractical. So that's one of the reasons that I think, you know, portable gaming, not so much even the 3DS or, you know, anything, but portable gaming as a whole has totally been taken storm by the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and even just smartphones in general. Now, uh, so is there any recourse? What does Nintendo need to do? Because obviously Nintendo's not going to release a smartphone. So what are they going to do to get back into this portable gaming market as well as the console market? Well, for portable gaming, I think there's a few things they need to do. They need to open an app store with an SDK. Straight up. They need to be able to, you need to be able to get onto your Nintendo DS, have a credit card hooked up, or you can go to, you know, your local 7-Eleven and pick up a Game Boy or a Nintendo 4, a Nintendo I don't suck portable handheld uh, card, and you can then, you know, have market money. There's a market, there's an app store, and you can buy games from small, tiny little developers through the SDK that they published. That would be huge. Second of all, they need to move away from this 3DS or this DS style form factor. I think the two screens are stupid. Uh, one's touch. I mean, they're really pretty both mediocre screens. The buttons are gimmicky. And I really think that they need to do a full redesign and uh, kind of go back to the basics. Take on the style of the NGP a lot. And that's one of the reasons that people have asked me. They said, well, if the 3DS isn't going to do well, neither is the NGP. And I respectfully disagree. Sony has made the NGP a killer platform. They've put an incredibly powerful processor in that. The same processor, or almost the same processor, that's in the PlayStation 3. So it's a super powerful device, and that's the only reason I see, or that's the only recourse that I see for these handheld devices to dominate smartphones. Unless they're more powerful, unless they have the same titles for the same price, they're not gonna win. But if you can throw in a PS3 quality game into an NGP, it's game over for, well, not game over for mobile market or, or mobile gaming, but mobile gaming won't be what it is right now. Mobile gaming will be mobile gaming. It won't be portable gaming. Portable gaming needs to be better. And if there are better processors, if there are uh, larger RAM caches and they can create better looking games with beautiful displays, then I do think that this mobile gaming will slow down a little bit and this portable gaming system will start to take off as it should. Now, uh, they need to drop the dual screens, as I said. They need to add better buttons. Uh, they need a more powerful processor, like I said, for the NGP. And they need competitive pricing. If they're the same price as the iPhone or the same price as the iPod Touch, they're not going to win. They need to be cheaper, and they need to offer the same functionality. Music, applications, other stuff, rather than just raw gaming. 
And the last thing is they can't be late to the market. They're already late with the release of the iPhone and the iPod Touch. The NGP is slated for the end of the year. If Nintendo can't release a new console by first quarter or second quarter 2012, I do believe that it's game over for them in the handheld market. And I mean, they can't keep their typical, this market of, oh, well, it's cheap, so let's buy, it's really changing. Um, sure, there's a 83 million people that bought cheap Nintendo Wii's, but now there's no titles, so it's not really that cheap in the end because you're stuck with a, a beautiful paperweight. Whereas the PS3, sure, it was a lot of money up front, but now you're actually playing it every single day, and that's what Microsoft or that's what Nintendo needs to do. They need to. They can charge more for a device. I don't mind paying more, but it needs to be more powerful and it needs to be competitive with the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Now, let's talk about console gaming. They need to add HD, absolutely 100% definite must do. Um, and they need to add a more powerful processor. Now, a lot of people are saying the Wii 2 or the Wii HD, whatever it will be called, uh, will need to be as powerful as the PS3 and the Xbox 360. I'm gonna refute that and say that if it needs to take the market with Storm, it needs to be more powerful than the PS3 and more powerful than the Xbox 360 or there's not gonna be anything that really comes of it. Second of all, they need to keep motion control. Uh, motion control is big. It's been great. And with the Kinect and the Move, there really is motion control on all platforms. And the Nintendo Wii needs to embrace their technology. The problem is I do think that they need to add regular console gaming. They need to add actual controller configuration. It can't be you're flailing your arms about. I mean, it needs to be more typical console style based gaming so that we can play uh, Call of Duty and other titles that aren't party games, that aren't gimmicky. And last of all, they need... Um, to get in the market pretty soon. If they don't come into the market until the new PS3 or the PS4 or the Xbox 540 or whatever it may be comes into the market, then Nintendo's in big trouble. So there you go, Nintendo. There's your crash course for what you need to do in the next five years with uh, gaming, and you'll be able to get back into the market so long as you do uh, what I suggested. Uh, viewers, if you disagree with me, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.